really good lanes with which Doctor you can deal with the creeps uh, of the enchanters, but they do go for the carry void. Okay. No, wait, we, we have seen them play mid bad rider before. It could still be an off lane void if they wanna if they wanna do that. Off lane void, that, then it's like either support Mirana or carry Mirana. Yeah. I think when, usually when they pick Mirana, it's like a carry Mirana and then they have a, a mid one on a more like hard carry here, like an empty spirit. What would like you that. prefer? Wouldn't you prefer Five like just mid Mirana and then safe lane void, off lane bad? I think that would be really good because it makes all the Fanatics lanes incredibly hard to gank to for the enchanters. Yeah. Like she won't find easy kills for sure. It's also good because they still have some synergy inside of the Chrono. So even if you put the Void safe lane, he's not known for a damage dealing kind of uh, safe laner, but it's still you have Witch Doctor Ward and Marana, so it's fine. Going to the final Ten bands now remaining. here. Alliance get rid of the Elder Titan. We go back to Fnatic side. This Five could be the S4 hero. We anticipate Storm, maybe Puck. And it's plausible options here. DK is possible to like they like to run that in the past. It's probably not the best hero here. But you know, if you if you want some additional lockdown, they only have to Ruby lift so far, and DK is always a good option. And what really surprises me about those two teams, Elder Titan always gets like until like the last banning phase. What's yeah. happening today? It, 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 it never, never happened. Today? It was like all day yesterday. It was either banned or first two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what one game it was picked up in the second pick phase, but other than that, it was always banned or picked first phase. I think the stronger teams just able to use the hero better than other teams, uh, especially like, I think DC is one of the best teams with the hero, even Wings, they know how to use the hero, they know how to build a lineup around the hero. I think that's the more crucial part of picking, when you pick Elder Titan, it's not just about Elder Titan, you want to build a good lineup around Alliances physical damage, spell damage, pick. and sometimes teams actually run Elder Titan, they don't do that. So oh. they do run the position for Mirana. Mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna play like he, he's gonna get boots first and he's just, uh, just gonna chase the enchantress around make sure that she doesn't get good ganks off and just kill her creeps with the arrows yeah Ten and it's seconds probably gonna remaining. be timber so mid yeah most likely i reckon timber so mid oh. and right off in on Ohio. I, mean, I, I don't i don't there's see any other hero yeah for alliance there's no other hero like yeah there. the s4 puck <laughs> but it's, complete, good it's like complete i'm um, comfort zone for alliance like it doesn't get better than that for them. So no excuses if they lose this. Nah, but I don't think it's good enough this game. I think their last draft was better, and this game with, yeah. with a worse draft, I think Fnatic is gonna be able to take the game. Will you agree? I would I would agree, yeah, Fnatic for sure. Fnatic, Fnatic for sure. Will it be a 2-0 shutout to start day number three? We'll find out. Let's throw it over to our casters now. It's Toby1 and Merlini. Well, the analysts lean the way of Fnatic saying the draft is better, but at the same time, if you're an Alliance fan, you're probably feeling very comfortable because Alliance is feeling very comfortable. This Ten is seconds, through and through an Alliance draft. If I saw the drafts without the teams, Five I would think that uh, the Nature's Profit draft is a little bit weaker, but because... This line is very, very... It's, it's something, too, which I know... It's kind of always been brought up in previous tournaments. As long as you Prepare feel comfortable, if you, battle. like, don't go out, out of the box, just play to your own strengths. Play to something which you know you can execute and execute well. Get your timings right with it. Alliance have done this time and time again with this exact draft. So they will probably feel very nice about this, but as the panel was saying, there's a lot of perks to this Fnatic draft. I'm running through my predictions real quick. You go on. I need my <laughs> compendium level. <laughs> you, you are so cheap. Okay, all Ohio. He went sticky napalm. He can't actually fire fly himself away from this one. As Ohio, the orb's gonna come in as well. Ohio can't get out. Alliance, EGM is gonna body block him. Ohio goes down in the top river. A very early level up in sticky napalm. No firefly. He didn't hold the point, and he pays the price. 30 seconds to battle. Normally you'll see them hold on, but yeah, it's actually not that big a deal. I think of the, of the death is but more it, so they have really deep observer rewards. Yeah, they're watching. They're watching the stacks. They're watching the movement to the top lane. Uh, it doesn't help the fact that S4 was the one to get the first blood. Now he can get the top rune as well. That's he why he went with the body block. Yeah, I could have just right clicked him down, but they wanted S4 to have a good game. Like with Puck nowadays, it often feels the same way as Queen of Pain. Yeah, you're gonna have a great begins. early game, and you're gonna be involved in a lot of kills, and then it it's does. like that one fight that you die, and after that you're like, okay, I can't do anything else. And he's picked sometimes, but just has not had that much success. This time though, he has a life sealer and the uh, nature prophet to always constantly fight with the puck. So I kind of like it, this game. I think it's really good versus the basis void and like the instant silence. Also very good at killing Marana, Timber so, uh, Very hard for the Batrider to catch. This is a nightmare to really stop Bulldog on the off lane. 
You can send the four triants down, you know you're going to get a guaranteed pull. The fact they didn't do enough damage this last triant means he can use the fourth one to block the camp. So Admiral Bulldog doesn't even need an Observer Ward in the bottom lane. That allows Alliance to commit both their Observer Wards to the northern half of the map. And Mushi's trying his best to drag the creep wave uh, around to an appropriate spot. And it looks like, yeah, he will be able to keep the wave close to his side, although Bulldog will get a free level too. Top lane, Ohio. At least he can have something against Loader, but they can both buy up sticks in just a bit. So Ohio with the Siki Napalm harassment's not going to do that much. And because you've got the Observe Ward over on the small stack, like, it's even that easy just to grab it. Like, S4 could move up for a rune and you could put that Bat Rider in a lot of peril. Admiral Bulldog always can TP off that bottom lane. Actually holding his skill point at the moment. So he hasn't decided if he needs Sprout or a TP. Enough. No clarity though. We usually see clarity instead of Brant. Yeah, normally you have a couple of clarities just so you have uh, the ability to summon more trains. But at this point, I'm wondering what he's thinking. You won't be able to jungle. Uh, oh, uh, Double Batrider, you do not have yeah. Firefly again. And that's three stops, denying the Mud Golems, gives another one. It's just never ending stuns from Arcade. Ohio, there's another stun with a Fade Bolt. Enchantress will find the kill. Black was saying he was looking for he was the looking for the Mirana to rotate around and be a real nuisance for RK, but so far RK has had free reign of his jungle and again they catch out this Bat Rider. He just needs level two or just having Firefly, but now he's died twice because he hasn't had Firefly. Arcade's even stolen his large centaur uh, from that camp, so he can't really get an easy level two from there. Now, he's gonna go back to the jungle, but it's two minutes in and they're still level one. He's gonna leech it from mid. <laughs> this is his only way to do it. He can leech it from mid, now gets his level two. There is a, like a semi-stack, there's like hell bears and the two small wild wings available. So we can farm this up and that'll bring him up to close to level three. It's still a disaster though. Arcade okay. mid lane, the smoke maneuver, the first stuns arrive, another mud golem stun, S4 with the extra silence, Timbersaw dropping low, but he's still got 10 reactive armor charges up. So this dive from Alliance pushes the Timbersaw off the lane with no bottle charges. Wow, he was really good at getting that kill. You try to time the death of the rock golem to get an additional two stuns out on mid one. They're going again. There's no timber chain available for the first stun. Into the class with the all bulldog. He TP's in the courier is nearby as well. The damage from S4 is not enough. And now we're higher. He's sticking nade pump. He's got his firefly. He's looking towards S4. The arrow will fly. S4 waits it out perfectly for the paralyzing cut for 343. He'll go down. Arcade's army still exists. They cannot have enough damage to find the kill. Even the Malatic on Admiral Bulldog, not enough tick damage there. Okay, so very well known for this Shen as well as Enchantress. But the Lions four kills up already. And he's not gonna have that many smokes available though, but he's already done the damage. Ohio is still reeling from this disastrous early game. Hey, you called it perfectly. Dakota asks the question at the end of game number one, how do you want to see it change? Like, I was looking for a jungler and you asked for someone who's got a little bit more activity early on, and the intent is exactly that. And heroes that they like. Can't particularly imagine Bulldog liking the play liking playing Titan on there. Does love that MP. Now we have double phase boots. So phase boots for Loda, phase oh, boots for Bulldog. They TP up to the top lane and they're looking to force down the tier one tower. Knowing how much they've crippled the Batrider, there should be no defense to this. Radiant's Ohio right now is just trying to take a triple attack. stack inside of his own jungle. So an early three tower for Alliance. Radiant and it looks like Mushu will be the one to come uh, up here. Pick up, open wounds. They're just chipping him a little bit, just so he can't time walk off the damage straight away. He saw it all as regen. He wasn't really pressured too much by Bulldog, so. He says the Tango will heal himself, he'll be A-OK, -okay, and that's a good way to save your first tower and buy some more time for Ohio. They're really looking for even more time. Like, it's a triple phase boost now from Alliance. One is just not enough, two is not enough. RK will grab them. Is this kind of like like what you're looking for from RK to get early phase boots instead of getting something more like the Arcanes? I think that's just interesting. They want to fight a lot with the MP. Uh, Arcane. Look for opportunity. Try and chase DJ down bottom lane. Abra Bulldog will come in too. They're waiting for the lead, but then Bulldog will pull up to the trap. 3 4 3 on the other side of the tree line. Paralyzed and cast. Maledic is over on Nature's Prophet. Ohio trying to close the distance, but RK still in the neighborhood. And Chan comes back off cooldown for him. 
We could have had the slow if required. Even with some lucky bounces, Vanna cannot get on the board yet. Still find a lot of CS. Face is void with 36 to 9. Timbersaw able to grab 31 CS early on. So on that front, Alliance aren't doing that terrific. They're ahead. They were ahead by 2k at one point. The game is still fairly close. Alliance can easily get out of control though. Puck's already level 6. MP. He can be anywhere, wherever Enchantress wants. The MP to be. And on top of that, Enchantress has been very involved, all, involved no, in all four kills, but he's no, already no. level 5 on the end. So he's not really suffering in terms of experience. I, I am seeing the recovery of the Batrider. Like Ohio is getting himself back into a position where he's got more net worth than the Nature's Prophet. He's uh, definitely got more levels than the Nature's Prophet. It was really important that Lucy TP would up there to stop that push. They, they have like okay pushing heroes with MP, but he doesn't have Cilius. I've seen not the best at hitting towers, especially without a Blight Stone. So that tower should not have fallen. A lot of stacking going on on the Fnatic side. Any heroes that can take it out. Rana also getting decent amount of farm and level level 5 with Arcane. Oh, we have an Infest combo for the first time. Loader straight into S4. Probably hoping the mid one's going to get aggressive. Mid one's been fairly aggressive against S4, actually forcing S4 to go back to base a couple of times. And now Green Coil, they open up. Where's the silence? Where's the control? The Timber Chain from the West. Robert's also coming in to dark from damage and the chain away. It'll hurt S4 and Rhoda. But it hurts mid one more as he will fall. And Bulldog instantly TPs down the bottom lane. Doesn't want to give DJ any space. Push the lane. Did he have a TP for before? I wasn't really sure on this number. Unknown. Fuji, jump, chrono, two men available. If he wanted it. But without 343's death ward, he just doesn't have the damage to kill off S4. Just can dis dissuade Alliance from again pushing a T1 tower. Great for some bashes. Oh, <laughs> a lot of bashes. They get a few points up the side look at least. Nice sentry ward down for 343, so they'll get both the orbs and the sentry that RK planted a couple of minutes ago. DJ already level 6. The Rubik closing in on it as he farms the top lane, so all these supports are about to be able to fight back. Nice off from Fnatic in the top river. Scanning out the fact that's almost a full duration ward as well on the top river. But it's all the load of moving up. Mid one's already there to defend. Mushi is able to move up as well. The lines are just trying to get a feel for. Her. Alpha X gonna play, are they gonna try and use the Victor Void like aggressively and set up? Or are they gonna try and use it reactively to TP the towers? Uh, are they gonna be sitting uh, behind people with the Marana trying to arrow people? Or is she gonna be trying to farm up the jungle with Arcanes? That they're still not exactly sure how uh, Fnatic are gonna respond to these early threats. But now we see the large scale engagement about to brew on top. Comes Alliance. One defense, 3-4-3, three, three. still no level 6 on him. Lines are waiting just long enough, but Arcade does have his impetus, so the damage is there. Moonlight Shadow. Uh, Avril Bulldog looks like he's the primary target on bottom lane. Ohio could just walk up to him and grab that last two of Bulldog. There's not that he can do about it. He is a little bit tanky, but now with the Starfall, Avril Bulldog falling. Oh. Not dead yet. Let's grab the major guard. That's on the top lane. Where you currently have a corner at Mushi. Picked up and rolled back down again by the Rubik. For a goal, actually holding Witch Doctor and Ohio back on the T1 tower, allowing him to kill off now the Witch. Doctor, just took the fall and four hit by the arrow of DJ. Loader has to pop out of him. A little bit of infest damage, but Mushi standing around looking for the time lock. Will actually take off a little bit of the damage thanks to that time walk of his. Fancy oh, to back out of here. DJ with a star fall doesn't get the extra star on the loader. Then a 20 HP. RK will turn with the damage. He had enough mana for one impetus. Then a stick charge back up again. But that was enough to dissuade again DJ from chasing Alliance. I really like that play from Fnatic where they went for the weakest target, the Nature's Prophet, who's not quite with his team. Alliance tried to get a little bit greedy and squeeze a little bit more farm out of Admiral Bulldog before they that T1, but they got punished for it. And now I think Ohio has more than recovered from his early two deaths. Ohio's back where he wants to be. Maybe not all the way where he wants to be. He wants to have that blink dagger up, but being a little under net worth behind Admiral Bulldog. They still have Chronosphere on Rubik. 
Soul last night using those two heroes, like you called out, but they can set up for another kill within one minute's time. I guess they don't have the best hero. Uh, Enchantress can be cool. There. Yeah. Radiance That's probably the best one by form. Stealing Time Dialogue is also really good, too, if you can manage to get his hands on that. Is AGM Rubik. Yeah. Learn something. He can get a chance to move. He now with an aggressive jump forward. He's gonna lose his life here. He came down just for the room, but he time walked himself in. It might be level four with a six second cooldown, but Alliance, they only needed five seconds for that. Radiance top tower is under attack. That was, that was aggressive. Maybe cutting down the trees so that he could get a little bit more vision of those two heroes, but maybe thinking that Alliance is not Radiance gonna play aggressively, but they've built fortified. all aggressive early Radiance items, like no bite on Bulldog, we can jump through to see the base onto the Enchanter. So you know that Alliance are just looking to fight, not farm. So that T1 town dropping Dying on the top lane in favor of Lota, that armor attack. coming up quicker. Alliance's team fight getting better now. Bulldog comes to the mid lane. They're missing a flight. Flight shot on Alliance. I think it really helps oh, the power. Up from the room, it's just double bat rider. They drop double sentries here. There's no way to hide the Moonlight Shadow. A little bit of waste of money with the sentries, but they take the kill and the tier one now. But they didn't even need to bring Loader. Loader is still on that top lane farming up. Maybe not the greatest thing when faced with Void is staring him down, but he's got no friends around to help find the kill. This is just a lineup that Alliance loves to run. When you can take away a lot of your mental power from execution on the hero, because you play the hero hundreds and hundreds of times, you can get much better plays around the map, farm a lot more efficiently, efficiently, and you can you also like know when and where your teammates are gonna be. I mean, this is also the other reason why the tier one towns are dropping. Mm -hmm. It's the standard play. Give Bulldog the space to be profit. Now Pluck closing in on his blink dagger. Find that with Life Stealer, Nature's Prophet, no one's safe on the map. It's a really good team fight, really good jump. Also gonna give Mushi Dyer's something to think about. Like he's gonna go for this attack. early Vlad's build, but he may have to consider going in for a man to break free of the silence. Yeah, I think a, a more common choice is Diffusal. This is a, a bit cheaper, and it offers attack. still pretty good damage inside the Chronosphere. Dyer's and you can help the teammate does this in case, attack. and then you can just time walk out of the Dyer's Dream Coil. Both teams Radiance need some free hits on the uh, safe lane tier one. Load is moving just a little bit quicker on it, and with the help of Admiral Holdup. I actually really don't think Vlad is the build here. Could just be a, a reaction to the fact that the Lions want to find team fight. Radiance but there's not really many heroes on the team. He's getting a lot of this. He's still got Time Walk stolen, so he repairs all the damage and four turns. He's looking for the Dream Coil. He'd prefer to get both of them. But he'll set up the set up for just Timber Sword. Thorbuck will keep himself in too. And they have a loader just waiting, sitting inside. Ray 4 3 starts his TP. There's no extra stun to stop that. In fact, now they TP the top lane. Mushi. Does he go make a break for the tree line? TP scrolls available. Yeah, he does. He jumps over. And again, no stuns available. So TP are successful. As two T1 towers also taken, one for each side. Uh oh, Rubik's almost as far into the timber saw. He's just a couple hundred net worth, and EGM almost has Blink Dagger. And EGM Rubik. There's a reason why this hero a couple of years ago was taken off the mid lane and put into a support role, and EGM was one of the catalysts for that. Yeah, some people also like expand it versus Alliance. But EGM, that's a fresh ops. Now they try and set Shibushi. Time blocks in, more of a zoning style, but it's actually Arcade. All Ogre Frostmage that does the best of the deep warding. So at least they get rid attack. of the orbs. A banana can't feel safe farming anywhere though. Like all these heroes can just easily die to the infest bomb from Puck or even an infest bomb from the Nature's Prophet. Batrider with a blink dagger. Maybe they can put some moves onto Alliance. They need to get a kill. Bulldog is probably the easiest target for them to kill. Especially when he's not going for that uh, blink stagger style. Yeah. Like, but he is he's still fairly tanky. He's also farming in the same place. He's off the map. He's in the jungle. And they know when to show the heroes that are very unlikely to die. Like, Lotus out in front. He's kind of hovering around that mid lane. Puck's also a pretty decent target to show in the lane. They know. Like, Fnatic know that the lines are coming over, so they just throw them underneath the Dyer of Circle off the jump forward. They kill him with him. Look, what a fight to get. And what goes in? Three back. Keeps it far away. EGM can time walk on the damage. DJ makes a break for the trade, but Alliance, they haven't lost.
off the single Iona. Finally, the puck will pop. It's the Maledict that does the work. Love it. They looked prepared for it, but they didn't have Mushi there. Mushi needs to be the one to stop them with the Chrono Spear. And without the Witch Doctor alive, they just did not have enough damage. That was a great Chrono Spear. So they jump on to Tempersaw. He's blown up. Where's Mushi? Still not there. The TP is in, only just arrives. But the everyone's The already... Chrono is great, but everything's done. They've got caught by the Chrono Spear or by the Dream Coil. Admiral Bulldog's on already on the top. He catches his ultimate and uh, the two heroes in the back just already died. And the, the fight's lost and they don't want you to just lose mid one without Dyer's middle any, tower getting anything really in return. Man, I want to give even more props to Bulldog for that Sprout. Actually in the middle of a Chrono Spear, keeping the faceless void between like his prey, but getting in between his prey. And EGM is such a nuisance. Now they go for the bottom lane again. There's TP support just in the neighborhood. S4's here. And you have that blink dagger on EGM now. He has a stolen star fall. And now they don't even need a gank anymore. They have the no blink. Pick him up. EGM going back in again. They knew the timber chain was coming. RK wasn't close enough for the stun, but still a blue. Now the dream for mid one. It is just looking too easy for Alliance, but it's good vision. Fnatic looked for him with the Sentry Wall, but they missed the odds. They can easily do Rose now. Level 3 untouchable on, on Enchantress, Lightstone, and Echo up on Life Stealer. This is going to be a super easy road. And Fnatic can find a few minutes to farm, but when it comes to team fight, how are they actually going to protect someone from dying instantly to the Life Stealer? Where are the force tabs? Dyer's top tower is under attack. They don't have anything. Like, come on, Witch Doctor's just dreamy. He could have, like, Arcanes or some other normal item apart from a wand. Probably just happy he hit level 6. They need more picks with the bad item. They can't do it through my shadow. Well, there's an opportunity for EGM right in the neighborhood. And an Ohio will throw EGM gets the last hit. Yeah, too predictable, but it, that's... That's like the only thing they've really been doing is trying to get killed with the, with the Bat Rider. They also have Chrono Spear plus uh, Witch Doctor ulti available to them, but Mushi's been far more concerned firing a secondary item after the blast. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Or even like Void with Piranha. Be a pretty good combination for them. Once DJ does have that axe, then maybe you have the damage, but still requires the Miranda to be in a good spot. Pretty close. Could be worse. Now you have Nathan Prophet almost with Orchid. So Timber is going to have a really rough time. You want your Yules by the time that the Orchid comes out. But he's not even going to have Bloodstone. He fought his cloak because he was on uh, die. One. That's the TP. Comes too far away. And no bash for unloaded yet. A very easy TP out. Diffuser play this time for Mushi, who now actually gets silenced. Decides to hold on to his Diffuser charge. Just S4. I don't know if you're just trying to fade out of the fusion charts, in fact. Radiance middle tower. Be careful. Is they can actually attack. turn around with Chrono. Is Puck actually going for an Orchid as well? I don't see that very often. All silences. Yeah, it's great versus Faceless Void, although he does have Diffusal. Yeah, two Orchid. He's, he's gonna Radiance burn the charges so quickly. That's why I thought like S4 was fading out of charge on him just then. It's like, well, you expect the rest of the lines to be right behind S4. Ags gets done now for the Mirana. Took 19 minutes on the support. Is under attack. Bad timing, but it's EGM in the mid lane. Radiant They're looking towards Lucy. EGM jumps in, picks up Lucy. They throw up the tower. They time walk. He gets the Chrono Spear off. Lucy now time walks off a little bit of damage, but he's more importantly keeping the lane. But Ohio, he can't do it. 3 4 3. The Death Ward goes to work. EGM was looking for the seal. Couldn't find it. 3 4 3. The damage will be enough. It's a 1 for 1 trade off. On the cleanest fight for all eyes, but Fnatic finally getting something. A fourth kill in the game. S4 tried to go for the plus one, blinking in the back line and coiling people so they could pick him off as Faces Void retreated from battle. Back. He weren't really concerned with saving a Moosey, and all four of them were there trying to kill the puck. It's been a struggle to try and find good builds for the puck. Uh, a lot of the puck's builds fail very early on. Not that great with their lineup. Uh, unless you go like Fail Tag on to go against the Timber. Yeah, maybe maybe if you had a Marana, but Fail Tag on requires a, a lot of farm and it's it still I would think falls off a little bit. Uh, so maybe he's just looking for another way to scale into late game. I think like getting a Bloodstone probably would be pretty good. He might click very very hard. 
Reward from RK, but it was easily scouted out thanks to the Observer and Sentry on the hillside. There's RK. Oh, man. Even denying his own Observer one. Fnatic can't catch a break. And the push comes Radiant's again from Alliance to Tier 2 Tower. The second remaining out of town for Fnatic. That's a big army for Fnatic to try and clean up. Shocker won't do that much. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. All of Fnatic's heroes just feel fairly useless. Like in, in terms of their team fight prowess, I Dyer's top we tower is under attack. Most of their abilities have just been used to top. They can just top, hold on, he's got an invested loader inside it. And then they just attack it as he stays. The Orchid goes to work. He looked for a good carrier. The puck was the first one for the life stealer. Now it's actually Puck is in trouble. Last suit up. Gucci looking for the time off. Heads falls. Face him. Can he get himself down this one? There's no odds. He can't blink away in time. And that is going to be Puck down for a long time and a good bit of money in for Void. Puck's actually died four of uh, the five times that Alliance have perished this game. I don't know. I don't know if Oblivion Staff was a build. Maybe it's going to work out for him later on, but instead of getting something like a Yule Step to make it a lot dip more difficult to kill him. Yule's is way more common versus the Faceless Void. You need to get rid of that time wasted. If you can't face it the second time, like, the, the hero is... high because he doesn't have that much armor, very little HP. You completely rely on your spells and your items to get you out of trouble. See, in the Goldcraft, there's still a lot of money going the way of Alliance, so maybe he can still afford up the Yule Scepter. I don't know if you want to leave a casual, leave a casual oblivion staff on the puck. You could technically turn into Echo Saber, I guess. It's, <laughs> it's not like you're investing any golden recipe. So you still get the mana region, the int, uh, the attack speed, and the strength, more importantly. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that's what you do. But you know, <laughs> if you don't want to build an orchid and realize the error of your ways, you can always just sell this null palace, we get the yield setter, and then get the orchid later. You still want an orchid though? Oh, when you got a, a Tempestor on the field, it's not going to be a BKB. Yeah. It would make sense. He'll probably look to... Maybe uh, Lotus? Uh, Tempa. Green Fire has four. Cancelling mid one's TP. Supports on the way from both Fnatic and Alliance. It's Nature's Prophet done forward with Moonlight in it. The Green Fire too. They focus on Prophet. Bulldog. The arrow will connect as well from DJ. And this is Alliance. Losing players, they don't really need to lose. S4 locked in the tree line, still no TP scroll available. They'll have to walk it out. Phase shift falls up in one second time. TJ waits for the moment. And well, back by the Firefly will take the moment from him. Ooh, and that's rough. He's fighting just before level 14. And level 14 is actually a really important level on Puck because you need that level 4 phase shift so you can phase and then blink. He only had 2.25 seconds for left GM. He shift. Mid one doesn't have a TP scroll. He has to stay here. EGM, he knows something is wrong and they're gonna find him in the tree line. And that is now the fifth kill for Loda. So while Puck has been dying, Bulldog, couple of casualties as well. In fact, just between all of like, like Fnatic's kills, it's only on Bulldog and S4. Loda is having a terrific time. But you can see the gold graph starting to swing up. One of the worries as you play with a Puck on your team. Is he gonna fall off 20 plus? And or even more worries on the big immediate Chrono. They find Loda. Loda, he needs time. This Chrono needs to end for him, but he can't do it. Loda will drop it. It's a huge kill for the Bat Rider. Take S4 with a Dream Soul. They hold Ohio. Not Mushi, however. He's gonna time walk himself out. So it's gonna be Ohio picked up by the EPM. With a stolen time walk, he can track down the Bat Rider. Rubik is making so many plays in this game. EGM. What a beast. Maybe he can carry. He, hey, he's he building Aghanims. Yeah. This is an Aghanims ETM rush up the blink dagger. Imagine he steals way. Death Ward. Whew. The Dream Coil. And if he steals Death Ward, though, that's kind of on 343. I mean, he's just sitting there. But then again, actually, you don't want to. I can talk with a war, uh, voodoo restaurant. He hasn't skilled it. Yeah. There's not a single point in it. So technically, at the moment, he can. A lot of times you just like, uh, you're more worried about your placement. You don't want to get caught in Chrono Spear. You want to be like close enough. So you can follow up. So it's just something that easily, easily can slip out of your mind, especially because Rubik's not a super common support pick nowadays. Bushi closing in on his core. The Yasha Manta. So many, many ways out of the hit of Kelly G. Okay, what is S4 gonna go for? He's back in base right now. Is he gonna spend 2,000 gold? He could kind of complete his orchid, or he could sell his null and almost get his yule. I'm, I'm not sure what his mindset is here. 
or what he wants to do. I think he's dying a lot, so I think he's easy to make it. You'll find out sooner or later, man. That was a weird move from Fnatic. They they Moonlight Shadowed while Witch Doctor was de-warding an Observer Ward of Alliance. So Alliance had perfect vision of what was going on, then Moonlight Shadow was down. And they infest Live Sealer into the park. EGM is the front runner. This one doesn't really have an escape plan. Ohio does. It looked like he was trying to set up for a smoke and oh, they find they find Rinchy. Observer was down. They jump, they pick him, they control him. The darkness. Perfect movement from Alliance. And now they're 60 seconds without a faceless void. Yeah, he thought his manta illusion would keep him safe, but Cinemas too, they definitely know that they're illusions. And he also was oh, way too close to the tree line on that oh. right side. Advantage for Fnatic is the creep waves are all pushed out. Dyer's Even if Alliance did want to take down that tier attack. 2 tower with this one minute downtime of the void, uh, they're just not capable of doing so. Even their bottom lane is being fresh. It's Bulldog has a couple of trees down there, Dyer's but he's not committing himself. Is under attack. Ooh, DJ actually has a gem. Thinks that this is their time to get back into the game. Maybe stop that second roach coming out from them. Maybe they're also just worried about all this attack. vision of Alliance, seeing where they're maneuvering. Yeah, but he could easily die. Uh, like, in if that's not the puck, like, there's no way out attack. for the puck, or for the Marana at that point. Fortified. Doesn't seem like there's any way out for anyone apart from maybe a Timber or a Time Warp, that's it. And here they come, boys up in four seconds time to jump in, they find Arcane, drag him up on top of the hill. Is there any save? No, there is not. And in fact, now it's the infest pop out. Hit one floor, Rishi looking for a chrono time, and the only way he's going to find is the punt, who then actually has an infest through. S4 taking a little bit too much damage from the Maledict, so he's going to pop from that with a phase ship timing, he'll survive through it. Load up, will it be enough with a chrono? They hold him in position, they actually do. It is still enough. From the Maledict to kill off the puck. Five Sealer drops two, and they're all on the run. EGM, Bulldog, Confuser Blade, slows him down, but he already has a Hurricane Pike freshly delivered. Give him that movement away, but the Flame Break is down. Another Confuser side, slowing him up, and Bulldog will die. Fnatic getting big back-to-back -back kills against Alliance. And this will repair all of the negative XP they were behind in. May even bring the gold down to being practically level. Yeah, and... Most of Fnatic's heroes have fought items before they died. died. First Timber with like a cloak and his cloak on complete. I saw Marana buy a ghost after before she died. Facebook Void had a Manta style before he got picked up on top. And looks like Puck has completed his orchid, so he 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 went for it. Yep. Still seems like a huge danger zone for Alliance. They they had such a good start on the 10,000 advantage in the gold and they were getting kills left, right, and center. Fnatic couldn't find anything. The life still had free reign. But now Fnatic have just, they're getting really good chain kills. I think they kind of were in the mindset that, okay, well, they're not going to really play aggressively on us. We've counter uh, a couple of times, like they countered the Bat Rider on the top lane. Uh, they dealt with multiple Void Corona spheres, and they felt comfortable enough to farm, because that's what Alliance likes to do. Too much. Fnatic, they were not stopping. They weren't scared of the best bomb. The Alliance may be able to secure the the road. Fnatic, nowhere close to the pit. Yeah, that's too far away down. Yeah, there's... There's no way for them. Yeah, the damage from the line is also quick enough they'll get through Roshan. So a lot of times they actually give it to Bulldog, but uh, maybe they give it to Loda this time. For Shetty Loda, we seem to make a bit more sense. That allows him to safely farm up, maybe even purchase his full assault Kurox, which looks to be his next target. Yeah, then he can actually go in and bait the Karnas here. That fight, he actually had to back off very early on because he was scared of being in that bubble. Oh, S4, he just going forward, just using Dorb as well. Smoke maneuver from Fnatic, but it's, it's kind of a weird one. They they ran one down mid, they pushed two to north and two to south. Oh, this is and now pretty interesting. If they show someone on top, then they're going to all think they're near bottom. But Alliance actually returned with a smoke of their own. Yeah, and they pinged out exactly where Dyer's mid one was moving. They actually think they say towards mid lane, but if they follow down inside the jungle, S4 is going to get an easy pick on mid one. He's got 15 plus three charges. Denial is possible. Only great timber chain. No bloodstone charges. Oh, he loses five of them. But no bloodstone denial. Bio and Marana spring extra up on top of the lane. Will Bulldog or anyone else TP up there? A Bulldog just TP'd himself to the mid lane. They're coming for a Rax. You can. You got the range on the Prophet. You got a live sealer who's just itching to be, be into a building. Oh, okay, maybe the puck will come up. But DJ revealed himself. It's a crap, though. Oh, the jump. Oh, the higher. Secondary TP 
he's on the way in the last two net four and he survived the orca was on dj bulldog is on his way in now he orca's on the higher ohio still has that advantage of flying Oh, DJ hides in the tree line. Another face shift from S4. Wants to roll up. He's too far away. He'll join in then blink forward. But it's EGM who finds the kill with the Star Storm. And with that arrow flying from Arana, you actually reveal your position. DJ leaps up and then TP's away to safety. I think on some puck. They weren't able to get like all the bursts down during their last. So ideally, like the puck just farms the lane and doesn't actually jump so you can get the the lasso on him before he casts anything. I'm like Puck was expecting it. Here comes Alliance. No bat rider for 30 seconds. Buyback is unavailable. They can chip away at the base. Timber is also on bottom lane trying to push this out, but in the meantime, Alliance now arrived on the top. Timber needs to be here for the Sharkman. Slows down the push, but doesn't really stop Loader. He just rages through the paralyzing task. Wait, oh, the arrow! It hit S4. That's a good five seconds. You do have the life killer inside with an S4. He'll run quickly, Mookie, Chrono Spear, EGM and RK. Caught the back line. The shark from as well is ripping through RK bit by bit with a need more damage. The mounting will help with that one. EGM trying to juke at everything he stopped, but he already used the lead. Two heroes lost from Alliance. The Ohio was four flank breaks of bubble. There's no RK Seekman. He's on Bulldog, and they will hold it with the last two. Fnatic bend against the Lions. Very aggressively pushing in to that tier three tower. And they pay the price. Not S4's best game. That was one of the worst uh, times get hit by an arrow. Loader is walking very close to the Fnatic lineup. That's Fnatic. Easy push to tier two. Another bad fight for the Lions. Mushi, I, I think, had a really patient Chrono Spear. He got the Rubik so that he can't just steal it and then Chrono his entire team. A little bit slow with killing him, but still with the right idea. That's still the perfect start as well. We get to have a quick look at it. There's that arrow on the S4. The death ward from very, like, the best, best safety point for 3-4-3. And load out the tank through all of it. Once you mop up the back lines, you're pretty good. We come back live as uh, the infest. Pop back out again as Mushi as well as mid one on the run. DJ is low. This is Alliance. They need to take this fight for the time loss from Mushi. Holding Loader in position. You can time walk down again. You can save the Moonlight Shadow. Profit TP forward. The vision. The sentry wall is down. The Sprout Hall Timber on the arrow fly through. Doesn't find a target. The BKP Batrider on the front lines. Can't get the last two off. He doesn't actually have a real target to go for. S4 wanna jump any further? He knows the BKBs are down, but where is your target? The ping came out, they saw 3-4-3 in the tree line, just to the right, that's where Life Dealer will go. The arrow comes in again, it goes away from the Alliance heroes. Unable to connect, and now that's Wish Doctor down for a little bit. It looked like they were about to retreat, but Timbersaw canceled his TP, realizing that perhaps Colonel Speeder could have swung that fight for Attic. However, he didn't really have enough mana to Manta and Time Walk and use Time Dilation and Chrono Spear. That's why I kind of like the Echo Saber build from Faces Void. He's a little bit more mana regen than the Vlads. And you can farm and fight, especially if you're a position one Void. She's been playing pretty well. As long as he gets the Chrono, it seems the rest of his team can do the work. And with an E Blade up on DJ, more burst damage potential from Fnatic. I sent the Blink Dagger up at the moment, but Batrider, Fire Flying, looking for an opening. The tree in from Bulldog is so close, and the arrow will actually tank on the tree. -in. This gives just a warning to S4. He'll back up a little bit from the top lane. And EGM is now doing the split push on bottom. He's got Time Walk available with Blink Dagger and a TP. They actually scan to see if anyone from Fnatic has come out, and they are not. He actually has Ags this time. Last time I think he had Ags, but wasn't able to steal anything aside from the leap for Marana. Uh, yeah, a lot of great spells to steal. You get the passive starfall, you steal Starstorm. I don't know. Very good question. Technically, you think it should work. Yeah. Oh, Batrider! 
at the same time as EGM with the telekinesis, he wants to time walk off the damage, able to do so, BKB trigger from Ohio, they really want to kill off EGM, but it was Whitstock from the back line that got the kill, now Mushi does fall, but needs the time with the ball and the they got loaded the ball up, and for Dreamcast, he's trying to cause a couple of problems, so I was dropping down low on EGM, almost soloing up DJ, and he will, he'll blink up and find that kill, there's the rest of damage being done by Mushi, he'll find that kill on Loader, the big hero of Alliance. Top net worth, but it's still a three for two trade off. No Witch Doctor early on, but we're still able to get that kill on Batrider. And the plays from EGM, the man being initiated on, able to track down the Marana. I think you're okay with that, you're a fanatic. The, he got the two big cores, the Lifestealer and the Nature's Prophet inside of that Chronosphere. And as long as they die, your Timber Solid didn't die, it's, it's still a little close, I guess. Losing Marana is a pretty big deal considering she has an Ethereal Blade at this point. What on earth? Yep, that's the money, man. E Blade, that's the pop I was talking about. And the damage, which is still there as well for Lion, it's gonna start to increase. Arcade. Now 50 gold away from having his Aghanim Scepter, combining with the Dragon Lens. Now they have a Lotus Orb on Timbersaw, so they have so many ways to get out of the silence on the Fnatic, especially if the face of Void replenishes his okay. charges. Timber's gonna find him in this rune, they just walk over. The face of Void's in the neighborhood, Sentry Water, okay. He thought something was awry. He popped the Sentry Ward down, now Baldur TP's in. Do they have a control? No, they don't. And they know the Bougie's around. There's no Chronosphere available. But there are eight fresh Diffusal Charges on that Faceless Void. He's now got the level two Diffusal Blade. The AP4 scaling well as we see Ake complete four items, Dragon Lance and Ags. Not too many great targets though. Embersol is normally like either really close or too far. Faceless Void can time walk most of the damage. And the answer might be very difficult for a single target hero like Enchantress to get out the damage. Nice blink last two and four falling back. The help was on the way to face shift is there. Have a bullet with the corner and guarantees the kill on S4 to come down to get face shift. The arrow are getting to make the death for the battle of the Victor Loader. He'll infest into that one little ready free pop back out again, but it doesn't get him far enough away. Two heroes down for Alliance, both without buyback. Fnatic have an opportunity here. They can push through the bottom lane and do some damage to the base. What another great chronosphere coming out from Muji. Did not hesitate at all. S4 is really important to them at this point. Catching life stealer, especially during rage. So important. Muji time walks forward, EGMs. He has star on so Yeah, I can actually see him. Yeah. I think he actually tried to do it then. Like he ran forward now. Okay! A big hit! This could be it for Fnatic. Getting that pop to E Blade. Help to get the kill for Timbersaw. But with another hero down, RK down for a minute. It may not just be one lane of rack. We may be looking at two lanes of rack, but now they find Bulldog. It's a play last year from Ohio. Admiral Bulldog shredded up. And he'll pop to the Malazic. Nothing was gonna stop that. Alliance oh, losing too many heroes. The former TI winners are staring down the barrel of a 2-0 elimination by Fnatic. Buck has the next item. Will be a BKB to complement the Orchid. But at this point, it's too Dyer's little too late as Fnatic looks to claim another lane. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. As you smoke, what are you going to do with this? They need to fight the port Colonel's up. Rubik gets a pick up. Try to drag mid one back. The jump in. Mushi time walks up all the damage that Alliance did. The Dream Call of Control. And with a lot of storm on Mushi, he's so safe. Bulldog off the shot of the arrow connect to the Chrono. All the remaining players, Alliance. How do you get yourself out of this one? You can all know for each year. We'll time walk up the damage from Mushi. Time walks right back with him. There's the star ball damage. Alliance. They own your home! And Alliance! Two lanes of Brax now. The only thing that protects them is that tier 2 tower on top lane. But at this point, Fnatic can push for GG. Everyone's dead. No buybacks available. This tournament has been a sad state of affairs for those a fan of the European teams. As another one looks to fight with us. Alliance. You hope for it, even a... Okay, I like the death though, pick up on 3-4-3. Three, three. Just the glory, a little bit of extra negative armor to bring down these buildings, but there it is. GG, well played. Fnatic have done it. They will start off bad day with a 2 0 over a line, eliminating the Rossi International 2016. Oh, Bushi was so clutch in the later half of the game with this.
Corn up here is just and the, that unlucky arrow catch as Alliance were in a position of power, kind of push that high ground. It looked like such a good start though for Alliance. Like you get that first blood, you shut down the Bat Rider, but then space just seemed to be created. The pressure didn't really come. A couple of T1 towers went down, but the Bat Rider found his items, he found his timing, and he found his progression.